<laughs> hey, Mick, where are you going? What's that? What's that? Just ahead, right next to the churro cart and the pretzel stand. Singing pile up. I'm singing in the rain. Just sing. <laughs> Roger! Monster! Four, three, two, one! Helen, it is now eight o'clock. I have no intention of making a spectacle of myself, thank you. Breadcrumbs! Breadcrumbs! Breadcrumbs from a bag! You've never let me down! So, as we saw last time on Expedition Studios, the park was designed with a core concept taken from Epcot's show business theme pavilion, originally called Great Moments at the Movies during concept for Epcot. This was an opening day attraction for MGM Studios, and the opening day attraction of the park which survived the longest time before being closed. On opening day, thousands of guests witnessed the opening of the great movie ride at the entrance to the Chinese theatre. Set inside the iconic Chinese theater, a replica of the Grauman's Chinese theater, which is one of Hollywood's most famous movie buildings, the theater opened on May 18, 1927. When designing MGM Studios, Imagineers decided to create the park using a reduced scale similar to how Main Street USA was designed, with one exception, the full-scale theater at the end of the street. The original building's blueprints themselves provided the inspiration and design for this theme park replica. The and most ornate building on Hollywood Boulevard is the Chinese Theater. It's our castle at the end of Main Street. In our case, Main Street is Hollywood Boulevard. The Disney version was so authentic that it included features that have been removed in Hollywood by the 1980s. As the home of the great movie ride, this Chinese theater differed in construction from its predecessor in that its roof was built separately from the building and hoisted into place. Architects even consulted with Disney when restoring the California version around the year 2000. One other replica of the Chinese theater exists at the Park Warner theme park in Spain, and it is much less authentic, although does house a theatre inside rather than a ride. One of the spires on top of the theatre was actually designed to retract. During the original Sorcery in the Sky Nighttime Spectacular, it would not obstruct the Mickey Mouse on top. In 2001, the Sorcerer Hat was built for the 100 Years of Magic celebration, and the four rooftop spires on the theatre were removed. The hat stood... I may be a bit biased though. It was removed in January 2015 and the original view was restored, with the re-edition of the spires added again in August 2015. Many people report it was to do with licensing issues for the theatre, but that remains unconfirmed. The Great Movie Ride is a spectacular tour through the greatest scenes of some of the most beloved American movies ever made. Once inside the theatre, a queue line wrapped around rotating props from several movies. One thing that didn't change though for over 25 years was the 7 minute pre-show featuring a variety of different movies on repeat. He's coming your way. Mary Poppins. The ride would recreate famous scenes from some of the greatest movie genres. At the time of opening, most of these movie rights would be owned by MGM, with the exception of Alien, which was owned by Fox. Disney, though, had worked with Fox on the Alien rights for another ride that was to be located in the Magic Kingdom, but was cancelled. We debated a long time about horror and sort of the violent side of the movies, and we didn't want to leave that out, you know, so we sort of selected the most horrifying movie monster that we could think of. Most of these scenes and characters used in the ride were negotiated on separate contracts, with some costing much more than others. 
The ride vehicles themselves were very similar to smaller versions of the travelling theatres from Epcot's Universe of Energy, which would steer and stop automatically while being guided on a wire embedded in the concrete, but a cast member could operate and control the speed during movement. The cast member would also interact with guests on board and with the numerous animatronics throughout the ride. Sensors under the ride vehicles would activate different audio and visual effects throughout the attraction. New cast members based at the attraction were given the script to learn and they had to pass a test to be approved as a tour guide. On the first day of training, cast also got to see the ride from above, viewing it from the multiple catwalks in the top of the soundstage. The role of the gangster or cowboy were special roles that cast had to apply for after being a tour guide. Guests would board these vehicles inside a 1930s era soundstage with a large backdrop of the 1930s Hollywood Hills before heading into the movies themselves. As the ride passed under the neon theatre marquee, you entered the first section of the movies. Musicals. A pyramid of audio animatronic chorus girls from a scene in Busby Berkeley's Footlight Parade. This scene was notorious for breaking down and having technical difficulties. The large cake rotated in the first years of the ride, but it was decided it was not worth it to keep up the constant maintenance. The scene also featured water jets, which had mechanical issues and frequently flooded the ride path. Instead, a scrim and light effects were added and the scene was largely toned down, essentially becoming the disco yeti of Hollywood studios. The next scene featured Gene Kelly from the iconic movie Singing in the Rain. Reportedly, Disney wined and dined Gene Kelly before asking him to sign off on his animatronic version of himself. After this was the Mary Poppins scene, featuring characters from the movie dancing on the rooftops of London. Mary herself would appear to levitate, and the device attached to the animatronic to do this was located behind her bag, hidden from guest view. The next scene was Gangster Alley, featuring an audio animatronic of James Cagney from the movie The Public Enemy. The character was seen wearing a tuxedo, but actually didn't even wear one during the movie. Reportedly, James Cagney's family did not like the trench coat look he wore in the film, and gave Disney one of his actual tuxedos to make him appear more classy. This scene would also be the first time the ride would split. Depending on how busy the park was, either one or two sets of ride vehicles would operate. When both were operating, a unique split section would happen and each vehicle would experience two different interactions. The front two carriages of the train would experience the cowboy scene, the second a gangster scene in Gangster Alley. When the park was not busy, only the second set of ride vehicles would be used and would experience a gangster scene only. Red and green lights would let cast members know when the scene in front had reset and were able to move forward. I have ridden the ride so many times and must have experienced the gangster scene 10 times as many as the cowboy scene. I didn't even know the cowboy bandit scene existed until many times after I rode the attraction and was pretty surprised when it just kept going through Gangster Alley. Two of the gangsters in this scene, Squid and Beans, were created using the exact same mold as two of the pirates from Pirates of the Caribbean. The western set featured animatronics of Clint Eastwood and John Wayne sat on top of his horse. The backside of the horse was never completed as it was not in guest view, so really it was only half of an animatronic. Warning, remain in your vehicle. The area you are entering is extremely dangerous. The alien scene showed Ripley in a battle aboard the Nostromo. Originally the scene featured one alien attacking from above, but a further alien was added for a second surprise. Next was Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. If you actually look to the opposite side in this room, you could spot some small easter eggs in the hieroglyphics, such as R2-D2 and C-3PO, as well as Pharaoh, Mickey Mouse and Donald. It was at this point your original tour guide would return with a scene featuring either your bandit or gangster heading for some treasure. The remainder of the ride had your tour guide take you into the jungle from the 1932 movie Tarzan and the Ape Man, and then into an iconic scene from Casablanca. Ingrid Bergman does not actually speak in this scene as her family would not sign off on the rights. Rumours and Disney themselves suggested this plane was used in the original scene as the serial number 1024 was the same exact plane used in the movie itself. The movie though apparently never used a plane in its scene and smaller replicas were made for the film as it was too large to fit into the soundstage. So, is the plane the real one from the movie or not? Well, another report states that a special nighttime shot was filmed at the airport with permission during the wartime. Workers refurbished the original plane from Bogey and Ingrid Bergman's final scene in Casablanca. It seems the mystery of the plane still remains. What is true though is the back part of this plane was cut off and it is the same one located crashed in the Jungle Cruise and was previously located on the Backlot Tour. 
The next scene, Fantasia, was originally planned as something different, the tornado scene from The Wizard of Oz. But due to the rights, complications and pricing, this scene was cut and changed very quickly to the Fantasia scene we eventually saw. This tornado scene would have been a much smoother transition to the next scene featuring The Wizard of Oz. When the ride opened, the Wicked Witch figure was the most complex audio animatronic at Walt Disney World. Both ride vehicles meet back up here and experience the same scene at the same time. The Wicked Witch figure was later updated again to become even more realistic and took one week to program the 15 seconds of animation of the figure. It must be a wonderful wizard to live in a city like that. Ain't the truth. Ain't the truth. After this scene, the vehicles entered a final theatre to view a movie montage. The movies in this scene came from all different movie studios except one, Universal. Originally, the final was to feature the Wizard of Oz himself and all the animatronics from the attraction taking one final bow. It was cut though due to the budget of the attraction. And that completes your journey through the movies on the Great Movie Ride. The theatre soundstage also houses a break room for the entertainment cast as well as the Great Movie Ride cast. The ride received minor updates throughout the years, the largest of which was in 2015 when the ride gained Turner Classic Movies as its new sponsor. The pre-show was updated to feature Robert Osborne and instead of the 7 minute pre-show it was now 45 minutes on repeat, as well as a change in the final movie of the ride to add in some newer films mixed in. Robert Osborne now took over as host during the ride. The cast member spiel was reduced slightly but the scene still played out as before. With its new sponsor surely the ride now will be sticking around for a little bit longer. Well, just two years later, Disney announced the ride would be closing permanently on August 13th, 2017. And this truly marked the end of an era for Hollywood Studios. The final remaining opening day attraction would be no more. While the great movie ride could have been considered timeless, it remained essentially the same for 28 years. No scene updates, no movie changes, many people riding it today I expect wouldn't even seen half of the movies featured in the ride. While it would have been nice to have seen a refresh of some scenes, the difficulty with that is where do you begin? What era do you choose to keep the ride popular? At one point, Disney were rumoured to be in talks with Peter Jackson to replace the alien scene with Lord of the Rings. If Disney were to replace or update a scene with something else, what would you have chosen and where would you have began? So what was coming? Well, announced at the 2017 D23 Expo, Mickey Mouse would finally have his own ride. Based on the new Mickey Mouse short animation style, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway will feature a new ride experience Disney is calling 2.5D. 3D without the need for glasses, through the use of dynamic backgrounds and projection mapping. Scheduled to open in 2019, this new attraction will feature a new story, soundtrack and put you inside a Mickey Mouse short. I'm excited for this ride and while I did love the great movie ride, it will be nice to see something new and I think Disney has made the correct choice for the future rather than updating some of the scenes inside. My only concern is that it will be a lot shorter than the 22 minutes of the previous attraction and looking at most new Disney attractions, I feel like that will definitely be the case. The new Mickey shorts are actually pretty great and I look forward to seeing what they do with this ride. Welcome to this happy place, welcome. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. And if you would like to get in touch with your suggestions or for updates on upcoming videos, be sure to follow us on Twitter to see where we're heading next on the expedition. We recently passed 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you to anyone who has watched, liked or shared any of the videos. You can now earn your expedition badges on our expedition theme park merchandise link below in the description. The first person to tweet us a picture of them in any theme park in the world wearing any one of the Expedition Badge t-shirts will receive a free second Expedition t-shirt of your choosing. So be sure to show us your pictures from around the parks. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.